Hello everyone and welcome to Telecom TV's super panel from the Mobile World Congress. Um, I hope you all take your seats and, uh, and join us in what we hope will be a very interesting, controversial, certainly informative discussion about 5G over the next 45 minutes or so. This is actually our seventh super panel. Uh, I'm delighted that once again we've been supported by Hewlett Packard Enterprise and Intel, for which we are always eternally grateful. Our topic this year is 5G, and specifically, show me the money. To the surprise of absolutely nobody, 5G is everywhere at MWC. You really can't move without facing a 5G marketing onslaught. Yes, 5G is here. Yes, new opportunities are here. But, and it's a big but, how can service providers realize the full potential of 5G? And what transformational steps must CSPs make now to optimize this potential? Precisely what new market opportunities, especially in vertical markets, um, are going to arise? So let's find out. As I say, I'm joined tonight by a panel of, of five experts. And let me, um, let me go through and introduce them one by one. On my immediate left, Robert Boynovsky from AT&T. Robert is VP Enterprise Mobility at AT&T Business. Next to Robert is Roy Kayser. Roy is Chief Technologist Point Next at HPE. Next to Roy, we have Howard Watson. Howard is CEO of BT Technology Service and Operations and Group CTIO at BT. Good evening. Next to Howard is Caroline Chan. And Caroline is VP Data Center Group, 5G Infrastructure Division at Intel. And last but no means least, we have Francisco oh. Javier Ramon Salguero who is Head of Network Virtualization Initiative, GT, GCTIO, at Telefonica. So three <laughs> carriers, two <laughs> vendors, well, we've got well, a good well. mix. And we've got, I'm sure, some people in the audience who would love to ask uh, questions uh, as, we, as we go through. I'd like to ask an opening scene set a question, really, to, to, to each of you in turn. And, and Robert, if I could start with you. Yes. What does 5G mean to at and well, thank you for having uh, us on the panel. I appreciate that, Intel, as well as HP Enterprises and yourself. So thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, when we talk to our customers in the enterprise space, um, th there is a lot of hype out there. And they want to talk to us about when can I get it, how fast is it, how pervasive is it. And after you go through that talk, they start asking questions about, well, what am I going to do with it? And so for, for us, it's about putting these enterprises on their digital transformation. What are you going to do with it? What applications are you going to run? What is your customer experience going to look like differently to disrupt your own industry with the technology that the likes of these companies are providing? So for us, it's that journey of the transformation that we're on um, in this new you know, day and era with 5G. And, and Roy, what about 5G for HPE? Uh, it's a transformational opportunity, frankly, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you see, over the years, we've had lots of technology changes and opportunities, and some of them are incremental. This one is clearly a step function, mm -hmm. right? So for us, it's trying to figure out where to partner, who to partner with, because, you know, as, as Robert said, it's a journey. No one knows exactly the solution. No one has figured it out end to end. So we're all kind of coming at it together. And so for us, we really see it as an opportunity to work with people to not only define it, but implement it. And Howard, like your other uh, telco colleagues here, you, you cover fixed and wireless. And what, what's 5G mean to BT? So I think for us, um, I mean, if you take our largest wireless brand, which is EE in the UK, um, the customer proposition there is very much built on a best network proposition. You know, 90% geo coverage on 4G, um, and you know, root metrics consistently showing that network leadership. So in that respect, 5G is actually an evolution. Uh, and as soon as that technology is available and on our higher capacity sites, uh, we will look to deploy that to users with smartphones. That's the first thing. The second thing, which I'm in, in, in respect of my job, somewhat most excited about is it reduces the incremental cost of adding bandwidth into the network. So the extra spectral efficiency that we'll get through 5G um, and the ability to sort of satisfy customer, customer demand uh, with less upfront cost is a critical one. And then the third one 
is the step change and probably what is still the promise um, of future different incremental revenue streams. Thanks. And Caroline, what does 5G mean to Intel? So for us, it means to bring the goodness of the cloud to the network. It really means a couple of things. Number one is the ability to spun up services faster and more the innovative innovation services. And then the other thing is that you started to really broaden the ecosystem. We still today really focus the ecosystem for the telco is still very limited. You can name in, in one hand who are the players, especially around infrastructure side. But with, uh, with 5G, because of the fact that everybody talked about you got to bring the verticals, enterprises, you got to be able to accommodate a much broader range of players. What does that mean? You need to bring some IT practices, some API, some open ecosystem. The openness really becomes a key theme to be more like the cloud guys, because they've been running over infrastructure, telco infrastructure for such a long time, monetizing over something that we all collectively build and pay for. We need, it's about time to, to level the playing field. And last but not least, Francisco, what about Telefonica? What's 5G mean to Telefonica? Well, I, I think that one of the good things of uh, being the lasting one of the, of the comments is that you, you repeat the arguments and no one blames you for that, right? <laughs> but, uh, but no, but, but I'll try to be original because uh, uh, essentially it's the same. I mean, it's, uh, of course, it's a part of an evolution. I mean, if you name 3G, 4G, 5G, it's obviously that you are getting the new technologies with better spectral efficiency. You're getting a, a, a new way of, of making your own deployments in a manner that is, is more optimal. So that's only for that reason it, it makes sense to go to, to our next generations. But in this case, we are seeing also the opportunity to have a more flexible network. I mean, if you think of the new concepts that are coming with 5G, uh, are besides having the, the different type of connectivity, are also about the way that you manage that network. You add that those concepts in the past, it all that comes from the wave of uh, NFV and SDN, about that freedom of molding your network, but it's mainly something that is more of the core or more for, for the fix. But now you have the, the, the last step, which is actually the, the assets in the access network, particularly the, 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 the radio one, and, and still having the constructs that let you to customize for different uh, uh, industries, for different type of uh, deployments, exactly what you want to achieve. So that is the, the other side that we see in, in 5G. Well, thanks, everyone. Um, and we're going to come back to some of those key building blocks uh, in, in a while. But let's look at use cases first. We know that 5G deployment is going to cost. Vendors are relying it to improve their balance sheets, after all. Um, there has to be expenditure before we start seeing this projected OPEX savings and, uh, and, and new revenue streams. So what would you say are the immediate use cases that are going to justify this investment in, in new 5G systems? Robert, can I maybe start with, it, with your, your view? Um, but first, you know, as an as a evolution and in investment, we've been through a lot of Gs, right? This is the fifth G. And each time we do that, we have a massive investment in the business case that starts and usually leads ahead of the service revenue. So this is not new. We stand up the business case, we put the infrastructure out, and then we go, um, go to market. Um, Manufacturing is really intriguing to me. The ability to turn up quickly um, a robotics facility and manufacturing, anything that needs massive capacity and density seems really intriguing. To be able to speed up those cycle times, like BT, we have a um, world-class enterprise networking business, and so we have the luxury of a wired infrastructure and wireless, but those cycle times are, are challenging for getting those customers their networks. So in the mobile space, there's a lot of intelligence there. The speed is there. From a use case perspective, the one that really gets kind of emotional for me uh, with AT&T's uh, first net, um, network that we're building out for our nation's public safety network. You start thinking about the, uh, the connected officer or the firefighter in a uh, virtual reality type, augmented reality, firefighting face mask, knowing where in a building to go to rescue somebody to be a first responder. Those kind of things choke me up. I'm super proud to be a part of the AT&T FirstNet experience. And um, I think those are the things 
for us that we know um, there hasn't been enough innovation in those markets, in those segments, that we're now poised to go deliver. Let's, let's, let's uh, shake things up and let's go carriers first and then come back to vendors. Howard, wh wh what about the, some of those immediate use cases? I mean, I think the, you know, the first immediate use case is going to be enhanced broadband for consumers of mobile broadband. Um, but I, I love the emergency services network point because we've, you know, we're working with the Home Office on rolling that on our 4G network. Um, and you're right, I think what 5G will enable there is just a significant step up in the capability, as you say, virtual reality. Um, you know, just the ability to get you know, those first responders equipped with more knowledge uh, to understand what it is that they're going into, I think is a really exciting use case. And, um, you know, the other one I think would, you know, um, we're seeing again a lot at the show virtual reality and augmented reality. And, you know, interestingly, we did the Champions League final in Cardiff um, last year. And I was a little bit of a, up until that point, I was a little bit skeptical about virtual reality. But when I saw the number of people who consumed that, either on the BT Sport app or by YouTube, I was a, con a convert in the moment to virtual reality there. Francisco, what about Telefonica and immediate use cases? What, what, what might we see from Telefonica? What, what, what could be the areas that you're, you're, you're focused on first? Well, I think that there are two parts of it. One is that we've, what were, if, if you look back on previous generations, what were the use cases? In, the, in 3G and 5G, uh, and 4G. It's not clear, I mean. Uh, I mean, if we, if, uh, if we had, were in a panel back then, and we say what were the, the use cases that we'll see and we justify that investment, probably we will fail. The same happens with uh, FTTH uh, deployments. You either believe it or don't believe it. And that's it. And, but the, there's something that could be slightly different in the case of 5G, is that, okay, it's more bandwidth, so it's more of the same and better, so better. But what about the niche uh, cases? I mean, it remains to be proven, and in past technologies we have not seen, whether the differentiation uh, paid back. I mean, you, you were able to create in a cost-efficient manner something that was slightly different from the connectivity and others, and people were willing to pay for it in, in a manner that was significant. And, and paid back the investment of that differentiation. I mean, we've seen that in QoS, I mean, in, in, in some technologies that, okay, they offered some niche, but did not mm, show that there were some significant new use cases behind, right? Here in 5G might be different, but not because of the differentiation, the ultra low latency or, or whatever, but because we have a different way of managing that. That is the promise, that we, that we can take the risk without creating a new network in parallel for doing that. And that is the, the big change. So, uh, honestly, if the, the honest answer is that we don't know. And actually, should we know? The things that we need to be ready for whichever other use cases that are coming. Uh, and, and, and let that space to offer to the different vertical industries. Caroline, you, you and, and Roy are both nodding in agreement when Howard was talking about enhanced mobile broadband. Um, Enhanced mobile broadband is one of those three pillars of initial mm -hmm. use cases we've all talked about as we've been progressing with 5G. Is, is that the, the leading use case for you, do you say? Well, so, uh, yes, I mean, because uh, especially in the U.S., I, I live in Dallas, and they already started some of the fixed wireless uh, uh, trial, thanks to AT&T. Uh, but I might be biased. I just spent a week in the Winter Olympics and watching how 5G... One, it's, a, it's, a, it's a deployment that KT put up, uh, Intel, uh, lucky to be part of it. It really transformed the experience for me. I'm not even a sports fan. I'm definitely not a curling fan. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody read my Facebook? I, I just got my membership at Canada Club just got suspended. Because <laughs> I bad mouth curling. <laughs> but what they've done using VR and this concept of the 360 volumetric uh, uh, video or immer immersive uh, uh, media really transform the experience whether you are in stadium or, or, or not on, on a uh, device. This afternoon I host a, a, um, a panel 
on um, uh, immerse, uh, we call them live events and fan engagement. I had uh, La Liga, FC Barcelona, uh, Media Pro, who produces uh, sports shows uh, all over the world, and Intel Sports and Nokia on. And I, I realized at the um, event, you know what sports is? Sports breaks down all culture barriers. Chinese might not understand Korean, Korean might not understand English, but we all understood when there's a good basketball game or a soccer game, I mean, sorry, football goes on. And the fact that we're able to put this in multiple angle, they showed us uh, El Clasico, when uh, FC Barcelona kicked somebody's ass, <laughs> Royal Madrid. <coughs> he mentioned Cardiff. <laughs> okay, Cardiff. They put this uh, multi-angle on. For the first time, I understood what offside actually meant. <laughs> it, it's so transformational for someone who's not a fan. And I started getting very into it, you know, because that is, to me, that is money to be made. That's why FC Barcelona is interested in it, because they have so many, uh, they, they said that China is the largest market. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. And most people will probably would never be in the stadium and watch a game, but they experience it. And I truly believe that is money to be made if we do this properly. You can probably make it once and twice and three times. Roy, use cases. <laughs> What, what, what can beat that? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, so Barcelona kicks somebody's yeah, ass. Yeah. There, yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Um, well, I mean, if I get tactical about it, right, and the first thing I said was this is sort of a step function, right? But if you're really going to monetize it, you have to find a way to smooth that curve out. And so he's right. You know, we've had all these Gs that have come so far, and there's lots of embedded investments already on that. So you have to find a way to leverage those investments to go forward. So you know, one of the ones that I look at and see is, is fixed wireless, I think, is going to be one that really takes off, right? Because it leverages off the existing base, but it gives you the promise of what 5G talks about, which is the explosion of connectivity, makes it simpler in places where you, know, you can't run fiber, et cetera, et cetera. But if, then if you take it beyond that and you look at it makes IoT and what everybody talks about IoT, I mean, machine to machine has been around for decades, frankly. Um, but now it actually can deliver on the promises that it talks about. You can't do a connected car unless you can do 4,000 gigabits of you know, data a day and offload that. Same thing with wheels to the ground on, and start offloading all the data off of your airplanes or you don't. the robotics, um, real-time concerns that you have around that. So I think you'll see those things that already sort of exist but have never really fulfilled what, they, what their promises and what you want to do, you're going to see those things expand first. Real quick on the back of that. So if, as a carrier uh, in a high capacity venue like the stadium here, which went to a game this week, it was awesome, had a really good time. But from a carrier perspective, getting that high capacity traffic off the network really quick is a good way to approach the ROI. 